I'm Phil. And I'm Angelina. With our husky lightning and a lot of wildlife around us, we live in this fairy tale chateau in France. We love bringing this neglected castle back to life inside. And we've got the vast grounds and parkland to take care of as well. We love the moat, but it brings some challenges with it. But it's all worth it when we get to share it with everyone at our live music events. Follow the ups and downs of our chateau life. Right, the main reason for the trip to the UK, apart from moving out the flat and moving out the storage unit, the, the only bit I'm actually interested in doing, this is finally the moat aeration system. And it doesn't look quite as big as I was expecting it to be. But look at what, look at this. Look, we've got the boxes, the pumps, we've got all the pipes, the aerators. I'm so happy and I can't wait to get it back. These are the two pump boxes. So they're what generate the air that goes down the pipe work. These are, these are the aerators. These are the bits that actually sort of diffuse the air into the water at the end of the pipe work. These are the trays they sit on so they don't bury themselves in the silt because obviously it's not been dredged yet, but we want to try to get some oxygen back in the water. We're kind of hoping that disrupting some of that silt into the water flow as well will help get rid of some of it as the water is changing between the top lake and the bottom lake. And then at the back is all the pipe work to lay it all out. I just I really hope that the weather gets a bit warm before I've got to get in there to fit it. The other reason for the London trip is to go and empty out a garage. As you can see, it's full and all of that had to fit into our trailer. And I popped across to UK to meet Phil and help him unload it. And there was a lot of stuff and a lot of decoration for our events. But not before we got a phone call that we will be needed to help out with the Humanitarian Act, thanks to all of your donations. Uh, okay, the sun's rising, it's beautiful. <clears throat> the car and the trailer are completely loaded up. Angelina and I have slept in a lay-by for a couple of hours after, uh, well, just needing to actually. <clears throat> and now we've got a 30 minute drive uh, to meet the convoy uh, just outside of Rouen and I'm going to be jumping in one of the vans there. Angelina is going to be handing over the vehicle we've picked up for other people to be taking. And um, then my friend is jumping in <laughs> this with Angelina in this trailer to get her, her home. So uh, the day begins. <laughs> So I came over to UK and joined Phil to help him with our garage backing into that trailer. But it wasn't the only trip that I managed to do and I'm quite tired as it's early morning and I managed to pick up this <laughs> lovely wagon 
Well, it's a people carrier and it's, uh, we're currently in the motorway services and we're just waiting for all the convoy that are heading out to Polish border uh, the, um, where it meets Ukraine to basically drop off a lot of stuff and the people carrier is uh, going to be picking and bring some people over or just trying to get them whatever they can so it's a good deed that came all the way from UK so I managed to jump in just before sort of uh, uh, my ferry in the night and um, bring it across to here and uh, we had very rough sleep I don't know if you can tell but I'm really really tired yes it's currently about 7 a.m. well you gotta do what you gotta do and despite what it looks like it's a good cause and that's what my cab inside looks like I had to sit in this driver's seat uh, and uh, it's got absolutely no heating working so it's freezing cold dressed up shivering for um, over an hour journey to the ferry uh, uh, at about 10 o'clock in the evening and then I couldn't make the radio work because the engine in this thing is so loud I literally couldn't hear anything so it was like white noise um, what else was happening oh yeah then my speedometer in there I didn't know what speed I was doing because every bump that I came across it was like just judging so rough idea <laughs> always living on the edge and then uh yeah i didn't know how many gears it had but i just figured five um just on the safe side yeah because one of them is a definitely a reverse so i was stuck in five um what else can i say uh lots of rattling about things that were in here that were annoying me um but most of all uh, it was just cold and despite all that, um, Phil has offered me his hoodie because everything was literally packed up and rammed in the car so we couldn't get anything out, including our luggages. So he offered me his hoodie to place over my legs because it was so cold, it was freezing because as you're driving, you can literally feel the wind coming through the car from the front of the um, uh, engine or whatever the bonnet so you know every little helps because it was absolutely ice cold it's like being in an ice box really <laughs> so this little beauty is about uh, I think uh, seven or eight seats and well that's good enough size for, to get people across really and we were stationed in this motorway rest stop waiting for the convoy to arrive all right, so uh, we are at a rest stop, just uh, having a quick break, and we're literally just about to cross into the Belgian border, and we are heading basically to Cologne tonight. That's where we think we're going to be uh, stopping for tonight, and we're getting quite far. It's going quite well, obviously. Uh, they picked me up near Ruan, um, and Angelina and Dave are off back towards the house of the car. Just thought I'd show you what... What's that? Like really, one of our group got lost, said he's at a rest stop, and was trying to describe where it was. I just said to him, you couldn't have just said, when I see this in a motorway, you'll know the rest stop. But hey, so yeah, we're just cracking on, uh, getting some decent miles underway, and uh, I'll give you some more updates as we get a little bit closer to the end. the second police stop today. <sighs> Laurie back there has been stopped by the German police on the uh, autobahn. Uh, to be fair to them, they do it quite a lot with all of the lorries. They like to make sure they are safe and that's quite a nice thing. A bit annoying when uh, obviously just trying to make headway and it's the second time today. Um, but the sun's shining and we're getting there. We have another thousand kilometres for today and it's already one o'clock so uh, let's hope this isn't long and then we're sent on our way still uh, yeah need to have a word uh, looks like it's all good they know what we're doing that's nice right I just want to say when you're watching this video and there's lots to show you. We'll give you our daily progress. I just want for any of this 
to say a massive thank you to every single person that has donated towards this cause from far and wide. Um, we wouldn't be able to do this if it wasn't for you. We are literally going and helping people because you did something. So thank you so much for everybody. And of course, we're just the delivery drivers. There is a lot of organization behind the scenes. Local businesses have donated. There are so many people involved in this that I just, there isn't anywhere to start with saying thanks. So I won't, I wouldn't want to miss anybody out. Um, so just from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. As I said, I will give you the progress as we go. Anything that's left over from getting the trucks uh, there and back in fuel tolls and uh, all the associated costs will end up going straight into the uh, the fund for the refugee families that are coming back to our area and you know we're trying to get more back as well so uh, don't forget that if you haven't yet don't worry uh, you wanted to donate to it the link is in the description below and uh, there are still ways to help because even if we do have enough fuel there's plenty more that can be done right we're in Cologne in Germany and the obvious issues about where's park all the rest of it we're just checking out a uh, truck stop make sure it's safe so nothing goes missing before it reaches where it's supposed to be and it's enormous there's the van I'm in should be safe here for the night Okay, so we're just waiting to get into the car park and uh, secure the vehicles. And uh, we just looked at the fuel prices. This truck stop is at the fuel station. Two euros 11 a litre of diesel at the moment. So not sure how much we're gonna go through on this trip with the minibuses, which are obviously bringing back um, the refugee families as well to stay in our local area to get their life back on track. So it should be an interesting trip and we're not even ending the first day yet. Yeah.